Helium is the most commonly used gas to give balloons lift. Helium is an almost completely non-reactive gas that is about seven times less dense than air. So in air, helium floats, for the same reason a bubble in the water floats to the surface. Helium is produced in small quantities in the Earth's crust. But for obvious reasons, natural helium is difficult to harvest since it floats away and escapes into the atmosphere. Abundant helium is produced in the sun, where extremely high temperatures and pressures fuse it together out of hydrogen. Obviously, we won't be getting our hands on this helium either. Instead, most helium produced and sold is a byproduct of manufacturing processes, especially in the petroleum industry. Because of its lightness, non-reactivity, and high thermal conductivity, it gets hot and cold very quickly, helium is useful in a variety of industrial and scientific contexts, not for just floating balloons. But helium is relatively expensive to produce and transport, especially in parts of the world that are far away from petroleum refineries. Luckily, there is a way for balloon fans to save money on helium. By definition, for a balloon to fly, the buoyancy of the gas inside just has to be greater than the weight of the balloon's latex. A balloon filled to its rated size with 100% helium often has more lift than it needs to make this happen, and this is especially true for large balloons of 14 inch or larger diameter. To save on helium, many decorators fill their large balloons with a mixture of 60% helium and 40% air, called a 60-40 fill. Specifically made helium regulators with a tiny air inlet on the side will do this automatically. But you can do this yourself without a special regulator by inflating the balloon 40% full with air and then filling it the rest of the way with helium. First, determine the size that the balloon would have if it were 40% full. Since this 40% refers to the volume of the gas and not the diameter of the balloon, to find the diameter, multiply the rated size by the cube root of 40%, which is about 74%. For example, a 16-inch balloon is 40% full at a diameter of 16 times 74%, or about 12 inches. This chart shows the air diameters at which the most popular round balloon sizes are 40% full. Now, inflate the balloon with air, and then deflate it to this size. It's a good idea to inflate it fully before you size it, to catch any defective balloons before you waste helium on them. Use a sizer to judge when the deflating balloon is at the diameter that makes it 40% full. Finally, inflate the balloon to its rated size with helium. It should float normally, though it might have less lift than you're expecting. If it doesn't float at all, the balloon has too much air, and you probably need to start over. This method generally does not work well with balloons smaller than 11 inches, since it doesn't provide enough helium to overcome the weight of the balloon. But for large balloons, especially 24 inches and larger, this method can save you a lot of helium, and can even be adjusted down to 50-50 helium and air for giant rounds. A couple final comments. First, while this method saves helium, it also reduces lift and reduces float time of the finished balloon. A 60-40 filled 16-inch balloon may only float for about 12 hours as opposed to a day or more. An 11-inch filled this way may only float for a few hours. Also, if you're using high float to increase the floating time of the balloon, keep in mind that the high float will add weight to the balloon as well. High floated 11-inch balloons typically will not float at all with a 60-40 fill. And for larger balloons, you may consider adding more helium when using high float to ensure that the balloon has enough lift.